Devin Graves coming to you once again from Studio D, this time with part six of my epic home recording series, Old School Production in the Modern Age. And today I want to demystify microphone preamps. There's a lot of controversy out there about mic preamps, whether or not the preamps on your audio interface are good enough, or whether you should get something transformer-based or a tube-based preamp. Well, I want to make all this clear and make you understand what the differences are, and this might give you an idea of what you want to use, when, and why. Don't be concerned with brand names, Neve, API, whatever. Of course, those are excellent preamps, don't get me wrong, but it's more useful for you to think in topologies than in name brands. There are three basic topologies for mic preamps. Basically, you have transformerless, which are the run-of-the-mill preamps that you find on just about any audio interface. It's the most modern design. They tend to be very, very quiet. They tend to be very, very accurate, and they tend to be very, very fast. Perfect for any recording, any time. Then you have your transformer-based preamps like your Neves and your APIs and so forth. And that's going to give you a little more weight in the sound. And that's something that is actually worth the investment, but we're going to go into why that really might be or why that really might not matter. And third, you have tube preamps. They also have transformers in them. The real tube preamps do. But they have a different characteristic, and I'm actually going to show you what the tubes do. The tubes tend to round off the transients. Okay, so you'll see a comparison here. I have a snare drum, a recording of a snare drum here in Pro Tools. And one is done through the uh, Mackie Onyx 800R, which should be fairly reminiscent of any modern transformerless mic preamp like you find on an audio interface. Then I have the snare recorded directly into an API. Then I have the snare recorded directly into this PAL Plus Mark III that I have. And that is a pure tube, transformer-based mic preamp of the highest order. All of these recordings are mic preamp only, no EQ, no processing, no compression. And I want you to hear and also see what they're doing to the sound. Let's take a look here in Pro Tools. Right up on top, you have the API. Below that, you have the Onyx 800R, the transformerless. And then you have the PAL Plus Mark III. And if you just look at them without even hearing them, you can see that there's a difference. I tried my best to level match on the way in. I didn't change anything on the playback. The faders are all just set to zero. Now, I played three different times, and the hits might not be consistent, and I'm not the best drummer in the world, but what you can see is with the API, you have this shape here. Let's just look at the shape. With the Onyx, you have a very similar shape, and with the tube preamp, with the PAL, you can see that that transient is kind of shaved off here but that is given in exchange for more body. And that may or may not be what you want for your drum, your snare drum, or what have you. But let's hear what it sounds like. Now first listen to the API. the PAL Plus. OK, 
Okay, one more time. The API. The Transformulas 800R. The Tube Preamp. To my ear, I don't hear tons of tonal differences. And these are all very different preamps, very different designs, very different price points. And the tonality isn't the difference. It's the transient response that really separates these. And one isn't right, one isn't wrong. It depends on really what you're looking for. Oftentimes, you want that transient on a snare just to have it cut through a mix. Sometimes maybe that transient is too much, and sometimes one might prefer a tube preamp to round that off. I've used tube preamps on snares on the Eric Clayton Thousand Scars album, and it worked wonderfully. I use the 800R for the toms and the kick. So basically, they're all going to work for you. Now, one thing that is easy to see here is if you look at the, well, especially look at the tube preamp, you can see such a consistent dynamic level in these hits. The API is similarly consistent, but some of these peaks come through a little more. Some of these transients are a little more pronounced. But on the transformer list, you can see these levels are far more erratic. These swings here, and these swings here are significantly louder than the rest. And so what that says to me is that when you're using a transformer, and especially when you're using tubes and transformers, you can see that there is some natural form of compression occurring. And that could be why you get this bigger sense of girth on the sound. It sits in the mix a little bit better, requiring less compression, and maybe that's part of why there is that magic in these preamps. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about that you would look at in any transformer type of mic preamp. And it's more than just the tonality. You hear the word color and you hear the word saturation. Anyone that has a high gain guitar amp is familiar with the gain setting, the input, uh, the, the preamp gain, and the master output gain. It's exactly the same thing on a mic preamp that has both an input and an output gain. Now the input is going to drive the signal into distortion. The, the cleanest setting is where the input is as low as possible and the output is as high as possible. But the more you drive that input, you'll have to reduce proportionately the output so you don't clip, but check out what happens here. Now you start getting into just complete distortion. You can really, 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 really distort this thing. Digging in through the crypt inside my mind echoes through Digging in through the crypt inside my mind Echoes through the hall of fame of the unknown Okay, you, that's the sound of a lot of records nowadays. And you can only get that if you have these two knobs in which you can adjust the drive. If you have only one knob, like on your audio interface, or even some of these other units, like the Neve 88M, I believe it's called, I talked about in the last module, that only has a single gain knob. So you can't drive it like this without overdriving the output. You want to clip the preamp and not clip the digital input which is basically what's going on if you don't reduce the output gain. 
So I have a follow-up video because I actually did some video tests to show vocals on these three different types of preamps as well. I used the Neve and I used the PAL and I used the Onyx 800. And when I was wearing my headphones, I could hear a distinct difference, a really clear difference. But when I played the files back, the difference was so minuscule. It, it, uh, one could have put it down to, oh, maybe my proximity was closer because I had to do the takes separately. Maybe I was singing a little closer to the microphone, so I thought that the test was a little bit useless. And I want to do a test again because my thinking and what I had experienced was that if you listen to a single track, a voice, a guitar, what have you, and you go through different mic preamps, the difference is so subtle that it's almost not even worth discussing. It's not even worth worrying about. But when you have a good transformer-based preamp, what starts happening is that it starts to accumulate. When track upon track upon track starts to add together, this, this difference starts to compound. And this is what I want to bring to light on the next video. I'm going to actually play some drums. I'm going to do some tests with uh, an API-type preamp, a tube-type preamp, and the stock preamps on the Audient ID44. And I'm going to record drums, guitar, vocal, bass, and we're going to see what they sound like. If what I'm saying is true or not, we're going to find out if this cumulative effect actually is a thing. We're going to find out. Having said that, you are going to have a far more profound impact on the tone of your recording with your mic choice and your mic placement. And if you want to do something to add more color, you can go a lot further by adding a compressor or an equalizer of varying types into the audio path. Far more, they're going to color that far more than any mic preamp would ever do from one preamp to the next. The mic preamp is the most subtle of all differences in all of the audio components. The microphones are probably the biggest. So keep that in mind. And this one has been a shorter video, and I hope that you found it informative. And I hope that it clears up some uh, perhaps misconceptions out there. And look forward to the next one. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions. I will be glad to answer them. And uh, subscribe, as I said, if you want to see this next video, which I will have for you next week. So until then.